are at Cooper MMA. I'm Mark Elston, this is Sean Cooper. And today, I thought it would be uh, beneficial for us to talk about old man's BJJ. I did a uh, video on old man's judo, which was quite popular. Uh, Sean just hit the big 5-0. I'm 68, uh, and I thought you might enjoy some of our perspectives on how to keep going, uh, and how to deal with uh, young, vigorous, <laughs> strong guys when we're rolling with them at, uh, at our uh, venerable ages. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna let you start. Okay, cool. Uh, wow, I, I mean, I, I think it's important that, you know, realizing that our bodies are not the same when we were 20, uh, but I'm still having so much fun doing BJJ and learning and uh, man, you can do it for a really long time, but you have to be, you know, uh, you have to think about when you're coming to the school every day, if it is, you know, a world war or, or UFC fight every time you come to the gym, gosh, you, you're, you're going to have a much shorter amount of time that you're going to be able to, that your body's going to hold up, you know? So I think it's super important to, you got to have fun, right? So some days I'm, I'm real technical and, and have fun and other days I step it up a little bit and, you know, put more pressure and push myself a little harder, but you got to have a good balance of both, right? It, it, it can't be all super live, but all, it can't be all super hard. You know, you have to find that balance and, uh, that way you'll be able to practice this in martial arts and, and, and do it for a long time. It's fantastic exercise. I love coming here and hanging with you and choking your friends. I mean, what, what can be better? <laughs> now I know that you really like uh, maintaining a top position. I do, I do. I, I, I used to be a, a, a big guard player and, and love, uh, you know, fighting for my bat. But nowadays I, I, I enjoy smashing more and, and really, fighting for that top position. I think that's super important uh, in any type of street fight or, you know, I wanna to try to stay on top uh, and, you know, be able to put the pressure and be able to get back to my feet easy, you know? So anyway, that's kind of a mindset that I have nowadays, but I come to school and, you know, I'm not training with the toughest person in the room every single day. And that's all I train with, right? You gotta have a good balance. So I like rolling with blue belts and, purple belts and uh you know different weights and uh and that that keeps it fun for me you know and i'm able to to practice and, and it's not a, it's not a war and i don't feel like I've, I've been in a car wreck you know every time <laughs> I, I come home so one of the, some of the things that that i bring to this uh and i'm considerably older than sean uh playing a very very defensive game um is one of the things that i find uh keeps me alive. Um, I find that in the last 10, 10 or so years, I've really been developing a defensive game. I've always been something of a turtle player. Uh, I find now I'm actually also doing flounder. That's just here, waiting to see what they're gonna do, and then being reactive. Uh, let, particularly if you're a more advanced elderly player, letting other people make mistakes uh, I like to help them learn from their mistakes. So I'm gonna take advantage of them, but at the same time, I'm gonna try and let them know that they've made a mistake. Usually after we've rolled, I'll say, you know, well, this is what you've done. This is how, I've, uh, uh, how it helped me out. But uh, I'll let them make the same mistake over and over to a, certain, to a certain point and abuse them exactly the same way each time until it maybe registers that this is perhaps not the best thing to do. Uh, I've developed uh, a game where I can give up my back uh, and still fight and still be on the offense. Um, I think that's also extremely important when you're really old because, man, it is hard to keep people off your back. Um, and uh, I don't want to exert all my energy in trying to escape bad positions if I can find a way to turn them into plausibly good positions. So I think that's a, a really 
uh, really good, uh, good way of looking at it. Um, take advantage of your strengths. I have very flexible hips. Uh, and so a lot of my game uh, relies on, on doing moves which, uh, which uh, uh, involve sort of leg fighting. I, I use leg fighting in the same way a lot of people do hand fighting or grip fighting. I do it with my legs because I have that particular ability. Uh, I think you've got some... Yeah, I think the longer that you're on the mat and, and your movements, everything becomes much more efficient, right? And, and you start using other parts of your body to trap and to move up and you know use your legs and your hips and yeah. hips, uh hips. you start using that a lot more and realizing you know how you can can hold someone you and your then your hands are free to start going for a limb or isolating or uh that really helped me you know as i the more bjj i do i use my a lot other parts of my body to yeah. to hold you or to control you so i think being relaxed breathing not getting tight, not worrying about, oh, I've got to finish that submission. Um, thinking more about positioning than specifically submitting. Uh, again, this is particularly, I think, useful when you're rolling with lower belts. Uh, you don't want to frustrate them if you're constantly submitting them. I mean, some people need that, but that's a very particular kind of role. Uh, for the most part, if you know that you could submit them in that position, uh, you don't have to prove anything. You don't have to do it. Hey, if you're injured, if your leg is sore, if your lower back is sore, don't come to class and pick the strong bodybuilder over <laughs> in the corner to roll with. Maybe that's not the day to roll with him, yeah. right? I, I would pick a nice, light little blue belt who's fun and I'm not going to strain my back and have someone super heavy. So be mindful of your body, listen to your body, and man, you, you can do this for a long time. Uh, another thing which, which I really enjoy and I think is great actually at any age or any level is slow rolling. Uh, I think that's particularly valuable as you get older. Uh, can we do a little bit of that? Sure. So when I talk about slow rolling, I mean literally like, like a sloth. So even the... <laughs> <laughs> but that's basically the kind of speed that I wanna that I wanna maintain. So I might try and maintain control, move in, and I'm gonna let him do stuff and react to it. So it's a kind of flow, really. I'm going for moves, Sean is going for moves but there's no speed involved, right? Everything is slow and deliberate. You get to think about what you're doing. Good, I think that gives them an idea, yeah. So that's a great drill. It's a great workout, but it's not one which is gonna uh, tear any muscles. You're not going to strain yourself. You just get a nice, smooth aerobic workout. That's great, especially when you have a, a mutual partner that wants to flow with you right. and not resist the whole time. That's not that's not fun that's to me. That's right. It's not a competitive role. It's right. A, it's a um, it's a helping each other. Yeah. Right. We're we're um, mutual benefit. That's right. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> so. All right, well, Great. some ideas about how to make BJJ more enjoyable and how to keep going, hopefully well into your 70s and 80s. Thanks, Mark. Hey, great class Thank today. You. Awesome, awesome. All right. Uh, if you like the video, please click like and subscribe to our channel, Ser Yoku Zenyo, that means maximum efficiency. If you click on the bell, you can get the videos as soon as they're posted. Thank you so much. Thanks.